Welcome to the 7.8 feedback video. I had intended this video and the 7.2 to be seen as one complete piece, but with a few problems on recording and in this case having to re-record for one reason or another, they've become separated. But I'm going to give them out to both classes just so you can have a look at each other's work, not as a way of a competition, but just to compare and be able to see what each other does. Okay, um, so first of all, thank you for everyone for sending in work. And this is a small selection of what I've received. So your job was to create a portrait using accurate proportion, tone, facial features, variety within the mark making, and a mixture of those things. Now, the first two pictures on the top left, um, we've got some nice portraits, They're obviously accurate, clearly done. I can't see grids in this case, so it means there's potentially their freehand, and that's a real hard thing to do. And with the first picture, you can see it's also used paint. That's not something that I suggested using. I said you should be able to use pen and pencils, black and white materials, anything you liked, and, but not to, to dictate that you should use paint. And so it's nice to see that someone decided to give it a go. And this is a really nice little piece of work and a lovely piercing blue eyes against that pink top and a real kind of bravery in doing a piece of work with this kind of material which could easily rock up in this case it really well. The second portrait is a nice tonal study it's not completely there with the tone you can still see the linear qualities within the eyes but it's really getting there and it's a nice solid piece of work. If you look at the bottom left of the screen you've got two portraits which are very much the same when the first one was given to me um, the message that came with it said, here you go, this is the best I think I can do. So I suggested going back to it, just adding more tone. And because the drawing itself is successful, it's accurate, whichever method has been used, and there are several methods we can use, the accuracy was there. And once that's there, nothing much else can go wrong. So it's returned to, more tone has been added, and it's made a nice piece of work. Of the variety of tones that you could use, the two central pictures, top and bottom, you can see they've opted for a grid. Now, the four different techniques we could use, you could project from an overhead projector, as we would do in class, um, and simply trace the picture off the wall. Or you could trace your image with tracing paper. That means it's going to be the same size. If you want it to be a larger size, getting the overhead projector is one option. But you either need to work freehand, or you need to use a grid. And as you can see, some people have decided to use the grid, and that's the tricky technique to set up it takes a lot of time and takes a certain amount of accuracy and it can be a bit frustrating but if you spend the time doing it you're rewarded with a picture that has accuracy and once you've got the accuracy and the lines are in the right place you can make mistakes and it doesn't matter so much because everything's in the right place these two drawings are very nicely done and they are accurate and although they're not completed tonally they're well on the way and if they were continued and that tone was added then they would be brilliant pieces for them. They are brilliant pieces anyway, but they can be taken from a linear drawing into a tonal drawing quite easily because the accuracy is there in the first place. Top right of the screen, we've got two images by the same person. What I like about the first one is that the grid is obviously being used to create the drawing, but then it's not just been a case of recreating it in black and white and making it look the same. He's added his own um, personality and using the colours, using things that like weren't in a photograph to appear, but using the photograph as the basis for an accurate piece of work. Then later this is followed up by this other study. Obviously not a self-portrait, but it's an extra piece of work on the portrait theme, creating this brilliant graphic design. Then lastly below that we've got one final portrait and what I like about this is the materials used. I've created such a depth of tone, it's a real strong drawing. And for year seven, I think it's a real nice piece of work. I like the attention within the hair, I like the strength within the mark making that darkness at that top uh, and in the shadows it makes it really stand out. And the facial features themselves are really well drawn. And alongside of this, we've got a few other studies, and you can see some nice mark making and tonal details coming through in the pitch of the shoes and the nails. So trying to use all of these things together, making sure your picture is proportionally accurate, whichever technique you use. 
making there be a range of tones from blackest to whitest because you can see something especially this portrait in the bottom right corner you can see that from a long way off whereas a paler picture you might have difficulty seeing so getting that black in there and going all the way to white making sure the facial features are accurate and you have a variety of them making trying to make hair look like hair trying to make cloth look like cloth other things that to attempt next that really push these images up to a higher level the next thing for you to do here would be to nip along to the 7.2 file and have a look at that presentation as well just so you can see what they've been up to okay thank you